I'm Mr. Beats, and let's get this out of the way first. Conspiracies are real. They really do happen. And governments hide stuff from citizens. And they often do it to hide stuff that they did that looks really, really bad. They classify documents in the name of national security, and then later we find out about stuff like Operation Paperclip and the Tuskegee Experiment. And don't even get me started about billionaires. Billionaires are very powerful, and they often influence governments to do what they want to do, and they can be just as corrupt. That all said, let's have a serious look at the Rothschild family. Also known as the Rothschilds dynasty, they are an extremely wealthy family that all descend from a dude named Meyer Rothschild, known as the, quote, founding father of international finance. Meyer and his five sons all built up a fortune by loaning money to princes who were going to war with each other. Yep, they were bankers, money lenders. Everybody loves money lenders, am I right? And war was good for business. Through both the French Revolution and the Napoleonic Wars, they made a huge fortune. After the fall of Napoleon and the death of Meyer, his sons set up shop all over Europe. London, Paris, Frankfurt, Vienna, and Naples, to be specific. In all places, they loaned money to the aristocracy and the government. Meanwhile, they had joined the aristocracy themselves, eventually becoming some of the most powerful people in the world. Pretty impressive since they were Jewish. Whoa! Whoa, whoa, are you anti-Semitic? You're a horrible human being. No, no, my point was that it's impressive that they were able to build up so much power and wealth despite all of the anti-Semitism that was so common at the time. For centuries, Jews had faced systematic discrimination and persecution, which made it really hard for them to build up wealth. So the Rothschilds overcame this. Speaking of anti-Semitism, I do have a video about that. Uh, before you check it out though, I wanna warn you that the comment section might make you lose your faith in humanity. As I said in that video, since Christians weren't allowed to lend money for profit, but Jews could, Jews often turned to money lending to build up wealth since they often weren't allowed to own land and were often forced to live in Jewish ghettos. Meyer Rothschild actually lived in one of those Jewish ghettos in Frankfurt, which at the time was part of the Holy Roman Empire. He had a rough childhood. His parents had both died by the time he was 12. So it was quite amazing Meyer was able to rise to power the way he did. Speaking of impressive, Matt of Useful Charts has released an impressive family tree that clearly shows the Rothschilds dynasty. If you're not familiar with Useful Charts, it's basically Matt's company that releases these beautiful historical diagrams. He sells them as posters on his website and also has a YouTube channel highlighting his diagrams. This video is a collaboration of of his Rothschild family tree. Be sure to check out his video going over it when you're done watching this one. Anyway, before Meyer Rothschild died in 1812, he gave very clear instructions to his sons for how to handle the finances of the family. He wanted their wealth kept within the family and encouraged marriages between cousins. Ew. And he went as far as to say never give a direct inheritance to daughters. But yeah, this explains why so much of the wealth stayed with the Rothschilds throughout the 1800s. However, by the end of the 1800s, there were other plutocrats, man. The Rothschilds were no longer the top dogs in the world in terms of wealth. Not only that, but family rivalries, politics, and wars greatly decreased Rothschild wealth. The Naples branch closed in 1863, and no male heirs led to the Frankfurt branch closing in 1901. The Vienna branch closed after the Nazis invaded Austria in 1938. Most of the Rothschilds in Vienna fled, selling their bank for a fraction of what it was actually worth. During World War II, the Nazis seized millions of dollars worth of precious items and art from the Rothschilds in France. Most of it was never returned. Flash forward to today and all that remains is Rothschild and Company, a multinational investment bank and financial services company, and the Edmund de Rothschild Group, another financial services company. Don't get me wrong, most of the Rothschilds around today still have lots of wealth, much of it due to assets passed down over the centuries. How 
However, today the Rothschilds have little power and wealth compared to what they had at their peak. In fact, just one Rothschild made the Forbes list of billionaires this year. Benjamin Rothschild, head of the aforementioned Edmund de Rothschild Group, is the 1,349th richest person in the world. That said, the family remains very secretive which is one reason why so many conspiracy theories surround them even today. I mean, we don't know how much wealth the entire family actually has. One source says $2 trillion, while another source says uh, maybe less than $25 billion. Look, the Rothschilds don't appear to control the world. I mean, there are 2,207 billionaires that don't have any direct ties to the Rothschild family whatsoever. So how can only the Rothschilds control the world? I think all the billionaires control the world. I just want to let you know, the New World Order has no legitimacy. Oh, yeah. And that we as a people are not afraid and we are waking up to the robber barons and the big banksters who are looting this economy with the Federal Reserve. The Rothschilds family did start the Federal, you know, they divided Europe first, and then, uh, took over Europe, the Napoleon. Thank you, thank you but conspiracies persist that the Rothschilds control everything due to their ability to control banking and finance throughout the world. But was Mr. Rothschild a moral man? He is a man that had five sons, and he sent his five sons into five countries. And from these sons, they worked and maneuvered and manipulated until they gained control of the central banks of England, France, Austria, Italy, and Germany. But a Jew, Rothschild, loaned money to Adolf Hitler. The House of Rothschild own Israel. They funded the early settlers, they, uh, they, they, um, they fund it now, they, they funded the building of the Knesset, Israeli parliament, they funded the Supreme Court building, which is full of occult symbols, etc which is what the Rothschilds are. They are a black magic family, um, what people call an occult family, although this, you know, that just means, just means hidden, um, going, going back to the Middle Ages. Everything from wars to the weather to causing the Holocaust or 9-11, some claim the Rothschilds were behind it all. So how did these conspiracy theories get started? For starters, it didn't help that the Rothschilds were Jewish. Anti-Semitism was a serious issue when they rose to dominate finance in the early 1800s, but it only got worse later on. And Satan certainly didn't help. I'm serious. In 1846, a pamphlet called the, quote, Rothschild pamphlet went viral. And it was written by someone who went by the pseudonym Satan. Satan said that at the Battle of Waterloo in 1815, Nathan Rothschild realized the French were going to lose, so he quickly returned to Britain to make money on the stock exchange. The story wasn't true at all. In fact, Nathan Rothschild was nowhere near the Battle of Waterloo, but the story spread regardless and the myth was born that the Rothschilds absolutely loved making money from wars I mean they love making money but they didn't start wars to make money later the protocols of the elders of Zion didn't help the Rothschilds reputation after it revealed the secret plans of Jews to take over the world of course those were also proved to be fake as well and the Rothschilds further didn't help their reputation when they expressed both vocal supports and monetary support for the creation of the state of Israel. And finally, the secretive nature of the Rothschilds also didn't help the reputation. People often create conspiracy theories when there are lots of secrets. It's fun to fill in the blanks on your own, after all. So do the Rothschilds control the world? Perhaps parts of it. But I'd say the Waltons control bigger parts of it. But what do I know? I'm a card-carrying member of the Illuminati. Be sure to check out Matt's video over on his YouTube channel simply called Useful Charts. His useful chart is the Rothschild family tree, of course. Be sure to subscribe while you're over there. And next week I have an even bigger collaboration involving, I think, around 20 YouTubers. It's going to be huge. In fact, it will be revolutionary. Thank you for watching, my fellow tinfoil hat-wearing brothers and sisters.